Hello, Brene. Hi. How, How are, are you? How are you doing in this unprecedented time that we're living through? Hard. Um, we're doing okay. Everyone is is well right now. Um, so I'm grateful for that. We are we are locked down. I, you know, I don't know if you know that my um, my husband is not only a UT alum but a UT medical school alum. So right. we've been locked down for two weeks. We've been we were on early lockdown. So we're doing okay. Um, anxious, uncertain, but we're doing all right. How are you? And how is your family? Uh, my family's doing fine. Uh, Carmel. Uh, fully recovered, and my daughter, after a, a little bit of tough road there, is fully recovered also. So uh, we're it's, we're healthy. For news. Yeah, we're healthy. Thank you. So we're 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 trying to figure this out day by day of what we're doing at the University of Texas, and we have heard from so many students at, at UT um, anxiety, concern. How are they going to finish the the academic year with? with all the courses online, how are they going to do in the courses, and what's going to happen after that. And uh, so what do you say to students? What do you say to people about this, uh, this crazy time that we're, we're living through right now? First and foremost, I would say you're not alone. Um, I think that we're all uncertain. We're all unsure. Some days are better than others. Some hours are better than others. Um, I think the most important thing, as someone who studied emotion for you know a couple of decades, I would say emotion can only take you down from behind. So if you pretend like you're not anxious or scared or unsure, that's when you're. It's a little bit more dangerous. But if you keep it right out front and just name it and say, "Look, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm in," um, you have a better handle on it. So I think it's really important for every if, if, just to give ourselves permission to say, "This is hard." I think the other thing that is really important for students right now, um, and I've been thinking about it a lot because I'm the parent of a junior at UT, is it's okay to be sad. It's okay to be grieving. It's okay to feel angry and frustrated about how things are turning out right now because grief is the price we pay for love. And we love the 40 acres. We love our friendships. We love our communities. We love our classes. We love being together. I mean, yesterday we were, you know, as a mom, I'm like, everyone's home. Um, but I said, Ellen, what are you doing? And she's like on her phone. She's like, I'm buying every single one of my friends. And I didn't understand what she said. She said, a GC to quesos on Wampus. And I said, what does that even mean? And she goes, I eat breakfast tacos every morning on Wampus, West Campus, at a place called Quesos, and they can't go out of business because we're all gone. And, and then she just you know, started crying. I said, it's okay. Like, if you love some place and people and your friends, then grief is the normal response. And it's okay to grieve how much we miss the normalcy of our life in Austin at UT right now, and also hold at the same time that a lot of other people probably have it worse than us right now. We can do both. Well, that is that is so true, Brene. And I, I know our students at Longhorn Nation appreciate hearing you um, say that. Uh, it helps validate uh, the feelings that they they have right now. And uh, one of the one of the ways that students love the university is the celebration we have at the end of every academic year, and that's commencement. And there is so much disappointment that we won't have commencement and we will not be able to hold our traditional commencement as we had planned at the schools or colleges and the university at its traditional time in May. And there's a, there's a great sense of disappointment and, and yes, loss um, yes. to the students who are planning to graduate and pass that milestone and celebrate with their families. It's, it's, I'll never forget my commencement at UT. Like, yeah, it's a big deal. And it's a big, it's a loss. So I have two things to, to ask you. Um, we would like to have a virtual commencement uh, the week that we would traditionally have it. And uh, since you were to be our commencement speaker, and our, I know our students are looking forward so much to hearing from you, and uh, your wisdom and your experience and your advice as they pass this milestone. Uh, could we ask you to participate in a, in a virtual commencement 
Heck yeah. Be the same thing as the in person. No, I'm there. Be close. Heck yeah. Okay, good. That's great. Okay. So I have a second request. We want to. We will postpone the in person commencement uh, for our colleges and schools and uh, the grand celebration of university commencement to a later time in this year. We're looking at what alternatives are, and we still want you to be our 2020 commencement speaker. Would you be willing to do that? That's a hell yes. Oh yeah, okay. I'll be there. Oh yes, I'll be there. Absolutely, uh, I wouldn't miss it. And you're giving our students some hope, something to look forward to, and yes, a celebration of completing their degrees at the University of Texas. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't wait. I gotta tell you, like, there was this story that my husband came home from the grocery store and he said a young kid had reached up and helped this person who was probably 80 or maybe 90 even get some paper towels. And this, this young guy had on a UT t-shirt, like what starts here does change the world. And we can start doing that right now. Like right now we can show the world who we are right now, you know, with open hearts, clean hands, horns up. Um, and I can't wait to, for both graduations. Well, thank you so much on behalf of our students and on behalf of Longhorn Nation. Uh, we are so much looking forward to hearing from you and doing that final celebration and horns up. Horns up. Thank you, Brene. You bet. Thank you.